Turkish officials have reportedly obtained recordings proving how Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi was killed. The Post reports American officials are aware of the audio and video footage. It, purported, it is purported to show a Saudi security team killing Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Now some senators want to block the sale of U.S. weapons to Saudi Arabia. President Trump rejected that move seemingly yesterday. As to whether or not we should stop $110 billion from being spent in this country, knowing they have four or five alternatives, two very good alternatives, that would not be acceptable to me. All right, for more on this, let's bring in Washington Post Global Opinions editor Karen Atia. She also worked with Khashoggi at The Post. Karen, um, thank you so much for being with us. Y y you were Jamal's editor. You have been, from the moment that this story broke, you've been sharing your insights with us through social media, through the power of television. Mm -hmm. um, just before we get into the details and what The Post is reporting now, what kind of a man was Jamal Khashoggi? He was um, kind. He was sweet. I mean, I think for a lot of Americans, this, I, I'm, I'm sad that this might be the first time that they've ever heard of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, but he is one of Saudi Arabia's most prominent journalists, most prominent writers, has been um, in the public eye and from Saudi uh, for the last 30 years. Um, go to his Facebook page, 1.6 million followers. So, but despite his, his status and his um, being well regarded uh, uh, around the world, he was extremely humble, extremely hardworking. I think, um, for me, one of the memories that is coming to me is just how he'd been kicked out of, of writing a, of a column for his paper in Saudi Arabia, kicked out of broadcast because he always sort of pushed, you know, pushed for reform. And when he came to the Post for, for the first time, his eyes just lit up. He would missed being in a newsroom. He was just like, oh, yes, I'm ready to work again. I want mm. to be productive again and just give me something to do. And I, I, I feel like his work for the Post kind of gave him a way to, to get his mind off of the pressures. And I, I think he was a patriot for Saudi Arabia. He, um, he really loved his country, and he didn't, he, he saw that it was going in a dark direction and that it was affecting him and his associates who were being um, jailed and, and threatened and, and detained. But um, he really wanted, it pained him. His first message to me, he said it was painful to write about what was happening in his country. Um, so, yeah, he, he just, and he just wanted to get married, that this happened to him. He had had his wife divorce him. Um, his kids had travel bans put on them because of what he was doing. Um, the idea that he maybe was finally settling into to his life, that's, that's just, it, it hurts me deeply to, to, to know that. But he, he was, um, he just wanted to write. He mm. just wanted to write, you know. President Trump has expressed reluctance to punish Saudi Arabia if they are, in fact, responsible for his death here. But members of Congress are saying, no, that we need to take some action here. What are the implications of that, though, if the U.S. does put pressure or even punishes Saudi Arabia? The implications of that, I think right now, even in the last 20, 24 hours, um, I've been hearing from dissidents and Saudis from around the world who, uh, you know, with, with Jamal's apparent murder, who are scared, who are scared and who say it's, it's the U.S. and pressure from the U.S. that could make any difference. So right now, beyond, even beyond the money, arms sales, everything like this, this is sending a message to the entire world on whether or not we would stand by and let uh, regimes uh, torture and, and murder journalists. Um, I think with the details that come out, it's that's that's how critical this is, um, and it, it's it's hard for me to even describe how how fearful you know if they could take Jamal. Oh, what about the rest of us, you know? So that's how critical it is. Yeah, and you know, Karen, um, all of us have been in positions where we've known other journalists who've been detained, who've been arrested, who've been beaten. This strikes me as an inflection point where, according to the reporting done by your newspaper and others, uh, this, and Senator Bob Corker said on television that he believes that Jamal is 
probably not alive. Yeah. So we're in an inflection point where a head of state can actually order the execution of a journalist who criticizes his government. Take us through some of the reporting. The headline at the Washington Post, Turks tell U.S. officials they have audio and video recordings that support conclusion that Khashoggi was killed. You can actually hear him being interrogated, according to the, your newspaper, and you can hear him being murdered. Mm -hmm. Interrogated, um, tortured, and murdered. Um, I think also it's to, to keep in mind that our previous reporting also has that U.S. officials knew of a plan to specifically try to lure Khashoggi back to Saudi Arabia and, and capture him. Um, U.S. intelligence has, has also seen these reports. So there, and I, I keep stressing that also. Um, the State Department specifically named Jamal Khashoggi as, as an example of, 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 of being targeted in its human rights abuses on, on Saudi Arabia. Um, again, you know, I, I personally, uh, as is that, I'm grateful for the stand that, that Congress is taking uh, or members of Congress are taking um, in this. And we at The Post are running a full uh, page ad demanding answers today. Um, and I think right now, uh, as far as the reporting, you know, uh, to see that uh, for Saudi Arabia's future investment. Um, conference that is coming up uh, in this month that media organizations from the U.S. are, are pulling out. I, I think that now is the time to really take a stand that we should not be doing businesses or turning a blind eye to uh, regimes that would do this, not only to a journalist, but to, to really anyone. Um, and so I, I'm really hoping that, you know, more businesses, more uh, U.S. officials, um, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is still scheduled to attend. I hope he changes his mind and withdraws. Uh, I, I think uh, right now it's looking to see um, those of us who are in the West, um, now the cards are on our table uh, yeah. to do the right thing. Uh, Crown Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman, though, has been seen as a reformer. Do you have reason to believe that he was aware of this, that he somehow took part in this? Our reporting, you know, uh, and reporting from the New York Times uh, implicates uh, that he knew uh, and potentially gave the orders out. I, I sit back and I think about uh, conversations that I had with Jamal when I edited him. And he, he even told me nothing happened without MBS knowing. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. He's absolute, right? So I think it is, it is particularly for somebody so high profile, and if the reports are true for how a 15-man squad to come in private jets, it's really hard to believe that um, this crown prince, who, never, who himself, I think maybe people in the West wanted to believe he was a reformer. I don't necessarily think that he put this label on himself. But um, it's, it's a heinous crime, and it tells us way more about him. They always say, when somebody shows you who they are, you should believe them. Um, Karen, uh, you know, all of us who are journalists should be so lucky to have an editor like you who has been so vocal and, and, and advocating for what happened to Jamal from the moment that this story first broke. I mean, you've been doing that. Um, so thank you. I'm sure his family and his fiance are appreciative of that. We keep holding out hope that somehow we will find him coming home. Um, but until then, uh, what you're doing, what we're doing is hopefully getting some answers from the Saudis and hopefully getting some answers from our own government. Yeah, exactly. I, I hope so. The whole world is watching right now. Indeed. Yeah. Karen Atia, thank, thank you. you so much. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you.